Hello, hello. Today on English no Kuru Haju, we have a special episode with a special guest. So on the show today, we have Ben Worthington from IELTS Podcast. And I think this episode will be really, really interesting for you guys. Ben, first of all, is not American. He's originally from England, but I think you will find his accent very interesting and probably a little bit difficult. And if you are interested in the IELTS exam, you will learn a lot. And if you're not interested in the IELTS exam, you will still learn a lot. So, really fun episode for you guys today. Hope you like it as much as I liked recording it. So, we will get started with Ben Worthington after a quick word from Alexia. Oi, oi! Até o dia 19 de agosto ainda tá rolando aquela super promoção, então até semana que vem. E a promoção do Cambly é quatro planos, dois para adultos e dois para crianças. Ou seja, tudo num pacote maravilhoso. Gente, é um sorteio, não tem que pagar nada. É só seguir o linkzinho que tá aqui embaixo na show notes e participar. Coloca seu e-mail, você vai receber um link único e você pode compartilhar com seus amigos. Quanto mais compartilhamentos, mais chances de ganhar. E é muito importante para você que quer testar essa plataforma maravilhosa de professores de nativos de língua inglesa, é só usar o nosso código inglês no Icru Podcast. Dessa forma, você vai estar super up to date de, de tudo que estamos falando por aqui. Tá bom? Now, on with the show! So, hey guys, welcome to another episode of English no Kuru Haju. Today on the show, we have a special guest, Ben Worthington from IELTSpodcast.com. Ben, welcome to the show. Hello there, Foster. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm glad we finally got uh, started with this interview because as, as the audience probably don't know, we've been back and forth a few times, Foster and I. But yeah, finally, we managed to get it sorted today. So really looking forward to this. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So, Ben, I think the first thing that a lot of our listeners will probably think is, where is this guy from? Because your accent is is much different than mine. So, where do you come from, Ben? <laughs> yeah, I think I still have a British accent, but I've lived a long time outside of England. I'm originally from Huddersfield, um, which is like near Leeds, Manchester. Up north, mm -hmm. I usually tell people, yeah, it's like the civilized part of England. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since I've lived there, probably a good 15 years or so, probably longer. But I moved to Spain and I lived there for 12 years. And then I moved out of Spain, went to Asia for a while. And then since I've left Spain, I've just been bouncing around from different countries. And I think nowadays, Some of the words I pronounce are still pronounced in like a, with a Yorkshire accent, or at least a Northern accent, but a lot of it has been kind of like internationalized, and that's why it's, some people say it's easier for me to be understood. Yeah, very cool. Where did you live in Spain, just out of curiosity? Um, I lived in a beautiful city. They call it a city, but for me, by my standards, it's a town, but they get offended. So anyway, it's a beautiful city called Valencia. Um, on the coast, in between Granada and Barcelona. Yeah, I would say Valencia is, it's a city. Yeah, for me, it's a city. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting because you're from the States and you'd say it's a city. I'm from like a smaller country for me. But anyway, yeah, the actual official, in the UK anyway, the official criteria for it to be a city isn't much. It just has to have a cathedral. I don't know what the deal is in... <laughs> For me, it was a little bit small, and but it was still a beautiful place, and the people there are very friendly. It's uh, yeah, I've got very fond memories. Yeah, good food, cool, cool. So Ben, you are not on the podcast to talk about orange trees and Valencia. <laughs> We're here to talk about IELTS. So in general, we talk a lot about conversation, about pronunciation, about the sounds of English, mm. but I don't think we have ever 
in almost 400 episodes, we've never talked about IELTS, and it's something we receive a lot of questions about. Right. So if you just want to start by giving us kind of an introduction, what is IELTS? Why should people take it? What's going on? Gotcha. Okay. Well, the IELTS stands for the International English Language Testing System. This was basically a project between British Council and IELTS, IDP, Australia, back in the 70s. I think in the 70s it was called something like Davies Test. But anyway, what it's used for is if you want to study in Canada, Ireland, the UK, or Australia, New Zealand, and increasingly in the US, if you want to study in those countries, they'll usually say, okay, you need an IELTS score of seven, or you need an IELTS score of nine, depending on the discipline that you choose. So you can take the IELTS to get into the universities in those countries, and you can also take the IELTS exam for immigration purposes. Right. For example, if you want to go, go for PR, permanent residency in Australia, you've got to show that you're able to speak the language. So they're going to ask you for probably something like a band seven in all of the disciplines, and that's reading, speaking, listening, and writing. And it's not as easy as you'd think. Like even native English speakers can like say if they need to band seven, they can easily walk out with a band 6.5. So it's not quite straightforward. It's, it is a challenge. So if it's a challenge for native English speakers, it's definitely a challenge for non-native English speakers as well. Yeah, I can imagine. And just to clarify, when you say band seven, band nine, those are the different levels, the grades of the IELTS, correct? Exactly, exactly. It starts, I think, around maybe a band four or five, I think. And then the maximum you can get is a band nine. And that's probably got the equivalency, the equivalency of something like a C2, if we use the common European framework of languages or whatever it's called. Right. You're totally fluent natives. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Ben, can I ask kind of a, perhaps an ignorant question? What is the big difference between the, the TOEFL and the IELTS? Right. It's not ignorant. I get this question all the time. Basically, the TOEFL is the one that the U.S., traditionally, the U.S. institutions have preferred. Yeah? They said, okay, I get me a TOEFL, pass the TOEFL at this level, and you can come and join our university. Right. So they're both doing the same thing. I think the biggest difference is probably the speaking part, because with the TOEFL, you sit there in a room and you've got some headphones on and you're speaking into the computer. Whereas with the IELTS, you're sitting there in front of a trained examiner and they're there and they're going to be assessing your ability face to face. And for some people, they prefer that. And for, there's some arguments that that's a real test of your language ability. And then there's other arguments that, okay, this other human being makes me nervous and I cannot reflect my true ability. So there's pros and cons for each one. But just to summarize, the TOEFL is definitely accepted and the, probably the most popular exam for the U.S. institutions, whereas all the other countries I mentioned a few minutes ago, they'll usually insist on the IELTS exam. Right. And I think I'm starting to see more institutions in the United States accept both of both the IELTS and the TOEFL. So I think it's becoming more popular in the U.S. as well. Absolutely. I, I think that IELTS and making the organization are making a big push into the U.S. because they used to have a monopoly over the exam in Australia, but then the government reversed that decision and said, no, we're going to start accepting other tests. So they started to expand because the golden goose was being cooked, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Ben, let's get directly into, into the exam and a lot of the problems that students might face. And the first thing that comes to my mind that a lot of students have asked me about is vocabulary and specifically vocabulary for these kinds of tests. And honestly, because I don't focus on standardized testing, I don't really have a good answer for them to how to improve their vocabulary specifically for these kinds of things. Do you have any ideas about that? Gotcha, yeah. Well, for the um, speaking, 
the vocabulary, I think we, because in the speaking, you've got to go there with the attitude of though it's like, as though it's um, a job interview, you know? So you can't be as relaxed as the when you're speaking with your friends, but you don't want to be super formal in that you're speaking like, oh, one should definitely, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be talking like so stuffy and formal. So it's, you've got to, it's, it's kind of like up, neutral, semi-formal, I think is probably the best way. Yeah. But for that, your vocabulary, I mean, there are a few tricks. I always suggest to the students that if they can give examples, yeah? So if you're talking maybe in the exam, I'll just briefly explain the exam format and sure. we'll focus on speaking and then they'll go on to the writing. But for the speaking, there's three parts to this exam. Uh, part one, where you come in and you get to know that the examiner will get to know you, put you at ease, ask you simple questions. Are you working? Are you a student? And all this kind of stuff. Right. Those are just general, easy questions to relax you, you know, as a student. And then you'll be given the choice of three cue cards. And on these three cue cards, you choose one. And on that card, there'll be just a question prompt with some bullet points. So it might say something like, describe a recent holiday that you went on. Bullet point one, describe where you went. Number two, describe what you saw and who you went with. And number three, it might be something like, describe a fun activity you did together or you did with somebody. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. And then you've got to speak about this for two minutes. And this is where an example comes in handy because, well, you can just say the words. I don't know. We had a lot of fun and we had, we made a lot of enjoyable memories from this holiday I had in France. For example, one afternoon, my brother and I, we were playing and a football got booted over the fence and my brother had to climb over, blah, blah, blah. You know, but just by giving this example, now I'm starting, I've used some good vocabulary. I've, I've mentioned the word fence. I, I used the verb to boot. I used, you know, some more vocabulary about football. And then I can go into this little story exactly. about my brother climbing over the fence, about him, I don't know, getting hit over the head by a saucepan with the, by the neighbor and just, you know, just random stuff like that. But I can go into details and I can show the examiner that I can speak about this topic, you know? Right. That's awesome. That's like one way you can improve or you can show the examiner that you've got good vocabulary for the speaking. Yeah. Also, what's really useful, and this is a good transition into the writing, but if you can talk about topic specific vocabulary, yeah? Yeah. So in part three, what happens is you start getting more advanced questions, more difficult questions, more abstract questions. So it'd be something like, why do you think holidaying is an important part of society? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's a hell of a question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, because in part three, this is where you're going to get basically over a, a seven or above, yeah, a band seven or above. So you're going to answer questions, uh, the question like, well, I think holidaying is an important part because nowadays in society, a lot of people complain about being overworked, about being stressed out, and about not having enough free time. I, I agree with all three of those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but just by giving that little list there, what I did is I used topic-specific vocabulary, yeah, which is like vocabulary that is unique to this topic about holidaying. So it was like overworked, um, stressed out, and free time. And these are just little ways you can Im improve or boost your score rega with regards to vocabulary in the speaking test. Oi pessoal, obrigada por escutar mais um episódio do Inglês Negro Rádio. Por agora, nós não estamos aceitando novos alunos para Sound School, mas enquanto isso, tem umas coisinhas bem legais que vão te ajudar com seu inglês e que também vão apoiar esse podcast mais amado dos brasileiros. Nós acabamos de lançar o um novo recurso chamado Friday Freebies. 
A cada sexta-feira, vamos mandar para você um novo recurso que criamos para te ajudar a melhorar cada vez mais o seu inglês e também algumas coisas bem engraçadas como o behind the scenes da gente. Então, para ficar por dentro disso tudo, é só acessar www.inglesnoicru.com barra free, tá? Você também pode entrar na lista de espera do Sound School e também será o primeiro a saber quando as novas applications serão abertas. Você também pode deixar uma review pra gente, hein? Juro, isso ajuda muito, 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 muito. Tudo isso e mais um pouco no inglesnoicru.com. Então vai lá e, como sempre, keep up the good fight and lose well.